there is any term that is my personal mantra, it would be to expand horizons. I've spoken about how there is always something new to explore in the hobby, and focusing on a narrow area is to miss out on possibilities. This also applies in getting more people into the hobby, to show that it's not as intimidating as it may appear. And yet, the surge of RPG streamers in general, and D&D streamers specifically, is something I've been highly critical of. Is this a contradiction? I'm not entirely sure, and in this musing I'd like to state my case. I should note that I'll be singling out D&D 5th Edition for the purpose of this, since its design is a contributing factor, but this video is not about that game. A few years back, Action Points made a video about the commodification of nerd culture, and when I look at this supposed new wave of players, that's what I see. The people who a decade ago would have dismissed the hobby out of hand for one reason or another, suddenly wearing said hobby as part of their personal identity. But this wearing is as fleeing as any other fashion. That's the reason I made the good because it's popular analogy in my Sayonara D&D video. I am very much of the opinion that said popularity is due entirely to the platform created by certain streamers, chief among them Critical Role, even though they didn't start with D&D 5th edition. Much like how the crowd of supposed comic book fans who only appeared after the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the fan base of many of these streamers are more interested in the characters at play than the game itself. This, to me, is demonstrated when watching these people speak on their fandom. Attaching D&D to their description and writing about their character in the same way an anime fan would write about their original character, Do Not Steal. No mention of mechanic, nor house ruling, optimization, and so on. While that certainly happens, it doesn't happen with these sorts of individuals. I am well aware of the cries of role-playing is about story. I've been hearing that kind of thing off and on for over ten years. And I say the same thing I've said for the last decade. Focusing on story alone is seeing the forest for the trees. It would be very easy to claim elitism on my part, or that I'm being too harsh on the groups by displaying some kind of jealousy. In my defense, I don't consider myself to be on some kind of pedestal. Additionally, part of the reason I'm so harsh on this new wave is because I've seen this before. I've called the years between 2000 and 2005 the D20 bubble, because that was when the open gaming license, while bringing some positives, created a culture that one has to use the D20 system, even when it doesn't fit. I feel like this streaming trend has shown signs of creating a similar bubble, and much like 2005, when it collapses, the audience that came with it won't just try other games, because they never truly gamed to begin with. It's for that reason that I try my best to highlight alternatives. My passion is for the hobby first and foremost, and that I like to see it given its proper due. This is why I try and highlight things like Bundle of Holding when I bring it up on Twitter occasionally, when they show games outside of the D20 bubble and focus on RPGs outside of the big two in both my reviews and the streams with RVT. If someone watches one of them and tries something new, I've done my job. When that streaming bubble bursts, and believe me, it will burst one day, and those trend chasers will have moved on to something else shiny, I'll still be here. As the old saying goes, fashion is fleeting, but style is forever.